Uh, all right, Andrew, this story is a very, um, this is interesting, and it has uh, local ties. Um, we're, we're bringing on Caroline Cesari and Jeannie Shenandoah. They're Onondaga Nation residents, and they are a part of this Native, Native American uh, protest against a pipeline that is being, being built near their land in the Dakotas. So this would be in uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota. The Standing Rock Sioux have uh, been against this and protesting it uh, because they say that the pipeline would disturb sacred sites and could affect drinking water on the reservation and for people downstream. Now, this has a local tie to it as well, right, as the people here uh, are really standing up in, uh, in an effort to defend those that are out there in, uh, in near this proposed Dakota Access Pipeline. On the line, Carolyn uh, yep. Cesari and Jeannie Shenandoah. Ladies, good morning. Thanks for coming on this morning. Good morning. So, thank you. Thank you for having us. So, tell us, um, tell us about the the pipeline and and what the proposal is and how close this is to coming to fruition. Um, and um, Jeannie, I'm going to leave that one to you. All right, Jeannie. Uh, Jeannie Shenandoah. Um, hello. Uh, the protest has been going on for quite a while because people are protecting the water. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, they can stop it. There is a great uh, uh, physical presence there and a lot of uh, legal action being taken to prevent them from going through sacred sites. They already have bulldozed through some sacred era burial areas. And... <clears throat> The danger, the biggest danger, is going through the this, under the Missouri River that would affect the water mm. to to everybody, to so many people from North Dakota all the way down through the middle of the continent, down all the way down south. So it's not just a local situation; it's a situation to protect protect Next, everybody yeah. to protect yeah. the water. Yeah. And they're they're saying it'll affect uh, 19 million other people's water. Wow! And um, you know, and they're actually it's a peaceful demonstration to um, you know protect our water. So and, you guys, being local, are are helping organize efforts here to help people uh, to help those people there. And what are you asking for people to do? How can people help you out? Well, well, we have several um, places. We have a place over here. Just uh, I'm from Onondaga Nation, which is just minutes south of Syracuse, mm -hmm. and we yeah, have a um, we have a building here where we are gathering uh, camping. It's uh, camping supplies for people because cold, cold weather is hitting, coming to them. So we need to be able to uh, make sure these people can be warm. Um, and we're also raising funds to help. There are so many areas that need to be taken care of. Yeah. Um, there is uh, needed funding for uh, legal costs because people have been arrested so far. A number of people have been arrested, and it's likely not to stop because these people have dedicated themselves to protecting the water. You know, this is They're, all coming at a time where if you really noticed, and I know that Donald Trump brought this up the other day, uh, about the pipelines and, and uh, you know, opening up these, uh, these, these pipelines, but it's very interesting right now that the, you're not seeing a lot of political talk about it, and the, and the reason is because we're not in a, uh, we're really not in a crisis when it comes to oil right now. And the other ways of being able to create these, uh, these fuels, natural gas, etc., cetera, um, that seems to be uh, really taking over. Um, and, you know, we're, we're looking at the, there is a reason why the price of oil right now is so low. It's because there's such a, a large supply. So if there was ever a time where you might be able to accomplish something, I think that time would be right now. I hope yeah. so. I hope so, too. The residual problem with this is that, you know, once water is contaminated, it's contaminated. Yeah. And, and we've seen that at Onondaga Lake and on a number of other places. And so um, this is a peaceful demonstration, and by far you don't see much of that on media at all. Right. Um, and there's 7,000 people out there, and they're living in tents, and it's, it's snowed. It's cold out there. Right. And the people that I know from out at the Ogallala have um, stated that some of the things that they need are four-season tents, 
four season sleeping bags and cots and folding chairs so they can get the elders off the ground mm, okay. because it's damp, it's cold. There's people getting sick out there because it's mm-hmm. so damp and cold. How does this story um, not, uh, not making, uh, making the mainstream news? I would think this would be something that certainly no some of these kidding. networks would be all over. No kidding. Yeah. But the way that it's being spread, it's being spread through social media. This mm-hmm. is how I found about it. Right. I found out about it through social media. All right. And um, there's been prayer circles, and Jeannie can tell you about her daughter's has had one at Onondaga Lake. Okay. Jeannie, you want to tell about Wenji? Uh, about Jeannie. what? I'm sorry. About the <laughs> prayer circle that Wendy's doing. Yes, Adam. we had a prayer circle at Onondaga Lake, and we will be having some in the future right. to gain more support from local people to raise awareness as to the danger to the water. All right, so how can people, is there a website they can log on to, a Facebook yeah, page? Yeah, there, there's one called Razor, okay. R-A-Z-R, mm-hmm. fund. All right. It's online, and you can look online for Standing Rock uh, protests. There's uh, places that you can send monetary donations. At this point in time, cold weather is coming Yeah. soon. It's already getting cold there. All right. And um, they need to make some shelters for the people because they are not going to leave. All right, Jeannie yeah. and Caroline, thank you so much for, for coming on. Obviously, the people aren't going to leave. They need the shelter, and people can log on to those websites and, and, and find out uh, ways um, that they can help you. Yeah, yeah they can also bring donations. Yeah, of, donations uh, at pet- the Onondaga Nation at the sports arena there. Okay. If people locally want to drop things there. They have cots, they have um, forces and sleeping bags or tents or things like that because they're, um, the Onondaga are taking trucks out regularly Got and it. delivering this out there. All right. So, well, I'm sure they appreciate what you guys are doing, and if people would like to help out, they uh, have those ways and follow the website or could make a delivery as well out there at the Onondaga Nation. So, Caroline and Jeannie, thank you so much for coming on. Good luck out there, all right? Thank okay. you. All right. Thank all right. You. And yeah. quickly, I want to take uh, Mike Shahoud. Uh, do I say that properly, yes. Mike? Uh, good morning. Yes. Uh, Mike, good Mike, morning. Mike How are is you today? good. Is an upstate New York resident, firekeeper at Sundance, familiar with North Dakota, the tribe, and what is going on out there. Um, obviously, people from here are really trying to help uh, those out there. Yes, that's uh, any help. Can, can, any any help uh, would be welcomed. Um, one one of the facts people should know about uh, is South Dakota, South Dakota, and North Dakota. That's where the, the tribes run. Um, it's the, it's one of the three poorest nations um, in the country every year when the polls come out. And so these people are very, very limited on funds and resources. And they're the ones sticking up for this pipeline and protecting the waters and protecting their sacred lands. Right. So uh, any, I- any, any, help, any help is welcomed. Okay. All right, Mike. We appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you very much.